What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? Welcome to the live show. Uh, thanks for stopping by. If you're watching this on the archives, hey, there's going to be a lot of fun to be had here. Episode 14 of Wrestling with Cards Live. We're going to talk the superpowers of super collecting. I think that there's a lot of benefits that can be had when you are a super collector that a lot of people don't necessarily talk about. I also have a box of cards. If you remember a couple, I, I, I don't know, a couple weeks back, I did a video talking about uh, the collection that I bought from Collecting with Caleb. And I was actually going through some of this stuff anyway. So I grabbed a box and I was like, I'm just going to go through some of this box while I'm talking. So if there's some kind of cool card that pops up, uh, we'll go over it. Um, actually, I've been just, and maybe I can throw some eBay tips out here as well as I'm going through this stuff. But like, um, here's some, what, what year is this? 1993 Upper Deck Basketball. These these are all common. So what I do is I'll, I like I grabbed a stack of these and I'll go through. And if there's any kind of big name players or rookies or something, I'll pull those out. Those will go on the eBay store. Now, of course, commons will sell on eBay, but I'm actually getting ready to pick up another collection later this week. That's several. Uh, I don't know if it's a hundred thousand, quite a hundred thousand cards, but it's quite a bit. And so I was like, okay, I need to make some room for some of this other stuff. And while this, while the commons will sell in my store, they do all the time, especially wrestling. That's a whole different topic. But the common sports cards, like I usually, if I've got too many, I'll put them in a flat rate box and kind of bulk them out on my eBay store, which again, links in the show notes. You can check out my eBay store if you would like to purchase anything, or you can join the Wrestling With Cards Patreon community. Again, links in the show notes for that. Even more great wrestling card content that's not going to be on this channel. But let's talk super collecting. Uh, anybody watching, if you have questions or comments watching live, drop it in the chat. If you're watching on the archives, leave a comment below and I'd be happy to get to it. But um, let's start kind of with where this came from. And this is just kind of something that I guess is a personal thing for me. And that's when I was a kid, you know, as I go through sports cards here, which is kind of coincidental. Um, I was just Shaquille O'Neal, Dennis Rodman. No matter, you know, I, when I was a kid, I ripped packs just like everybody else does, you know. But uh, it, it seemed a lot more affordable back then. So I would be able to just go to the convenience store and pick up a pack for a couple bucks. And I remember uh, Flair Basketball being like one of the expensive packs because it was like $5. And you only got like, I don't know, a handful of cards in it. But it came in its own little box and it was sealed. And that was a big deal. But so, yeah, I, I would open packs when I was a kid. But really, my super collecting origins, if you will, kind of came from collecting Shaquille O'Neal and Dennis Rodman. Try, and what I would do is I didn't know the term super collecting. I didn't know what any of that meant. I just decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get this binder and I'm going to put as many Shaquille O'Neal, Dennis Rodman cards as I can in this. And I didn't really care. Uh, I, I didn't keep duplicates. Uh, and that's something we'll get into with the carrying cross stuff. No big cards yet, by the way, just more of this 93 upper deck basketball. But I was like, you know what? I would go to flea markets, card shows, trading with people at school. I would, yeah, I would rip packs and hope that I would get the Shaquille O'Neal or the Dennis Rodman. And then in the meantime, I whatever I got that I did not want, I would trade at school or take to the card shop and get, you know, 25% of the credit whatever it was going to get me of stuff I didn't like. And I would then put that into cards they had, Shaquille O'Neal cards or whatever it was. So we got Ven Baker. Anybody remember Ven Baker? Ven Baker, rookie. We'll put those aside. That'll, you know, that even common cards of like rookies that we know in the past, those will sell for like $1.60, which maybe I should do a whole live show on eBay economics. I don't know. You can still make money on this stuff, trust me. But anyway, going back to Shaquille O'Neal and Dennis Rodman, I'm opening packs. And I'm getting rid of the stuff I don't want to buy the stuff I do want or trade for the stuff I do want. Where have you heard that before? That's where all of this started, the eBay store, everything. Buying a couple years ago, buying that box of, of, you know, quote, junk at the card store and piecing that stuff out, keeping the stuff I wanted, taking the money that I made off that, and then buying more stuff. And, you know, to think that I was able to buy a complete set of 8283 Wrestling All Stars cards based off of flipping junk boxes. Um, kind of phenomenal, actually. So, <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, little under the weather too. So we're doing this the best we can. But yeah, I would just 
Shaq and Dennis Rodman, and I would I didn't put them in any order. I didn't really like I knew what a checklist was, but I really wasn't following checklists. And I would just get as many of those cards as I could. Any of the varieties, uh, I don't really like parallels were a thing, but I don't remember having any. And so that's where it started. And when I got back into the hobby, I was um, really, I've never gone away completely. I would always buy packs here or there. And I would, you know, just, oh, there, there's a TNA blaster, you know, right when I was, when TNA really took off in the mid 2000s or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll pick that up. You know, there may not be much in there, but let's have some fun. Let's rip a box, right? So that's what I would do kind of all the time. You know, I remember in high school, I was, I wasn't really, I, I wouldn't say I was collecting anymore, but I would rip packs occasionally. So I was always kind of involved. But then uh, when I decided I really want some cool wrestling cards, and again, this is several years back, I decided, okay, I can't, like, I, I started with a shotgun approach, and then I realized very quickly that while this is fun, I'm getting some cool cards, this isn't really driving me, per se. So I was like, well, what can I do? And so I was thinking of all of these, you know, uh, Carl Malone, WCW alumni right there. Um, I was like, okay, what, what do I connect with? Uh, what is, what's going to like bring me purpose within wrestling cards? Is it collecting Hulk Hogan? Is it collecting the rare cards? Is it set collecting? I was, I was buying all of that, you know, like I bought the wrestling all-star set. I bought Hogan autos. I bought Hogan relics. I was buying, um, uh, I still have it to this day, a Dennis, tying Dennis Rodman back in with super collecting a Dennis Rodman, Hulk Hogan auto. Uh, I don't know that I'll ever sell that because of just what it means and what it ties in with my super collecting history. But um, I would buy that stuff. And then I just kind of was like, I want that feeling again with Shaquille O'Neal and Dennis Rodman. So I actually started collecting their stuff again. And I was like, I want to be the best collector of that stuff. I quickly find out with more modern product that you really can't do that. Uh, you can, but there are thousands and thousands and thousands of cards. So as I get started, and this is like a, I guess just an OCD that I have. I was like, I, I don't know that I can keep doing this because I don't know that I can get them all. So I did keep a few of them. And I, I, you know, like I've just mentioned that Dennis Rodman and Hollywood Hulk Hogan dual auto. I think it's a leaf product. Yeah, it is leaf and their sticker autos, which we know what the sticker autos do. But I was like that, you know, I'm going to keep that card. I'm going to keep some other cards because they're just certain cards. Like I can remember, I, maybe we'll pull one right today. Who knows? Um, like Hoops Predator, I think. There was there was a bunch of Hoops cards that of Shaq and Dennis Rodman that if I don't still have them, I'm going to have to go back and buy it. And they're like dollar cards, $2 cards, but they're just so fun and so nostalgic. So I will be going back and getting those if I don't have them. I haven't like, I haven't had time to dig through my collection, which is unfortunate. But anyway, I found out this isn't going to work. I need something I can collect where I can truly try to have the best collection. And you may ask, like, well, you know, why? Are you trying to be the wrestling card king? No, I'm not. Uh, why Why would you want to have? And it's just like um, it's a personal thing to try to have the best collection of something. And that's one of the, the goals that I think super collecting can give you is you you might not be able to afford and we'll talk about products in a minute, but you might not be able to afford the biggest, best cards out there. You might not be able to compete with the kings of wrestling cards, but you may be able to go out and kind of carve your own path and be kind of the king of your own thing, if that makes sense. So that's what I set out to do. But then I was like, well, where do I start? Like, um, you know, do I want to do a vintage? I'm like, ah, no, there, there's still a lot of stuff there. And like, there's not like a ton of stuff. Like if you want to be a Hogan collector, there's a lot of like a vintage stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there, but it's like, you know, it's a little bit more expensive. Nothing really differentiates it between like a grade and an autograph. So I was like, ah, I don't want to do that. So then I started looking at modern and like, well, you know, what, what can I do from a modern perspective? And I remember just casually ripping a box of finest, uh, 2020 finest and pulling carrying cross autograph or not autographs. Didn't have autographs in the rookie cards. Karen Cross rookie cards. And I'm like, this guy's on NXT. I love his presentation. Um, I remember watching him in Impact a little bit in AAA before NXT. I was like, you know what? This is it. I know there's parallels of this. That'll be fun to chase. It'd be my first rainbow chase. Um, 
you know, he's he, this is the rookie card, so I'm getting in on the ground floor. And as he progresses within WWE, which he would then get cut and then come back, we'll talk about that in a minute too. But, um, you know, as he would kind of progress within wrestling, I could follow because I got in on the ground floor of collecting his stuff. So I was like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the Shaquille O'Neal, Dennis Rodman approach, and we're going to do it with somebody modern. And it's been so much fun. And that's why I call this live episode the superpowers of super collecting because it has truly opened up so many avenues. Let's start with just the way you collect. So there's a lot of people I know that get um, sidetracked within collecting. So, you know, again, going with that shotgun approach, maybe they buy, they're buying into breaks. Maybe they only want new product. They're, they're just going after this and that and ev everything. And they maybe just don't find themselves fulfilled. Maybe they find themselves not being able to compete with others. Like I mentioned, you know, it's just some people out there with some really premium collections. So they just kind of get frustrated or maybe they get into prospecting or flipping, which carrying cross. Honestly, I was trying to prospect that there's a whole video in the archives of this channel about how that was a failed prospect to turn into one of the most fun collecting things ever. It was kind of a two for one. I failed to mention that a minute ago, but I was getting in on the ground floor, wanting to take that same approach that I took with the Shaq and Rodman stuff, like I mentioned. And I just went after it. Like, you know, I, I loved watching him through NXT. I loved getting the rookie cards. I started um, putting it out there that, hey, this is this is what I'm collecting. I'm now the cross super collector. I'm going to try to get the best collection I can. And away we went. So um, collecting rainbows, collecting autographs, you know, going down the actual checklist, using wrestlingtradingcards.com, using trading card database, using cardboard connections. All three of those resources put together is like, you know, I talk about the superpower of super collecting. That's like the superpower of wrestling card information right there, the trifecta, the triple threat. Of course, I don't know which one is Shane Douglas and which one's Bam Bam Bigelow or which one's Candido, but you get the picture. So use, again, wrestlingtradingcards.com, trading card database, cardboard connection. Use those for resources if you're looking up cards as far as like checklists, following rainbows, product releases, stuff like that. So that's where I started and started just going down the list like, okay, I need that card. I'm going to pick it up. And I started a spreadsheet because, again, we'll get into this now. Once I started collecting, I'm like, okay, well, I've got the finest rainbow done. The rookie rainbow, I buy the Super Fractor. That's my first Super Fractor I ever owned. And I was like, all right, let's just keep going. And then I'm sure you are, you guys may be familiar if you've watched on this channel. He was on the archives of this channel. Bo Wrestling, I was going to say Wrestling a Million Cubs. One Million Cubs on Twitter, Instagram, and the One Million Cups Project on YouTube. Uh, very instrumental in my eBay store, like huge influence there, but also just watching the way he collects. So for you, those of you unfamiliar, he collects One Million Cups, which he just recently hit, and that was an amazing story. But um, he's like trying to get to a million Cubs cards. Yes, there are duplicates. There are not even one million, according to him, there are not even one million actual like distinct Cubs cards out there. Muggsy Bogues, anybody remember him? Those sell pretty well. Same thing with Latrell Sprewell. Didn't know you are going to get some basketball card information here, did you? So anyway, um, he's collecting a million Cubs, and I'm like, what if What if I was to do that with Karrion Cross? Does Karrion Cross even have a million cards? No. Probably if you, like, I'm guessing if you took all of his cards and put them together, you're not going to hit a million. So that that wasn't the goal. What the, what the idea was, was that, okay, I've got this rainbow put together. Now what? Um, sure, there's other rainbows and other products that I may may get, may never get. Who knows? Hey, look, we got bowling cards. How awesome is that? What's that one guy? Um, I can't remember his name. Who do you think you are? I am. Let me see if we can pull some of his cards. I'm going to know it when I see it, too. can't remember his name right off the top. But, um, yeah, so I was, like, going after all these cards, right? And, hey, C collecting with Caleb is here. Thank you for Pete Weber. Why? Like I remembered his name for the longest time, and then all of a sudden it was gone. Caleb, these are some cards I got from you. Um, we will see if the Pete Weber card is in here. It's the Pete Weber break. Here we go. Here we are. Anyway, going back to one million Cubs. So, could I do that with Carrying Cross? And you may be asking, like, why? Here, Caleb is back. He's a legend. Absolutely. Like. Probably one of the most famous bowlers of all time, actually, I think at this point. Maybe for that just viral moment that came, you know, after the fact. But anyway, thanks for stopping by, Caleb. Thanks for your input. 
And uh, if anybody else has any input questions, anything, just drop it in the chat or drop it in the comments on the archive if you're watching this in the past. But anyway, so I was like, well, what's the pe people often ask me, what's the point? Why do you want all these duplicates? And the, the reason like I'm not generally going out and purposely buying duplicates. Most of the time it's people that have, a, you know, they buy into breaks so they rip boxes or whatever. And they have all these extra cards laying around. So I was like, why not start the 1 million Cubs project version of Carrying Cross? Because, you know, after going back to that 2020 finest, like, got the rainbow done. What do I do? Let's see how many we can get. Why would you want that many? Because it would be the biggest and best Carrying Cross collection in the world. What does that matter? Probably nothing to most people. What's the value on that, bro? I don't know. I don't care. I'm just trying to you know, get the biggest and best collection. I think I've actually got that at this point. I won't bore you with that whole story, but that's kind of just, you know, super collecting pre presents a different way to do things. I know people that consider themselves super collectors of certain, you know, wrestlers or talent or whatever, and maybe it's just Hogan, okay? So maybe they only go after Hogan golds. Maybe they are a super collector of Hogan autographs. So they just want every Hulk Hogan autograph they can possibly find. I'm just using that as an example. Maybe, you know, there are wrestling all-stars people out there that just want anything and everything signed, unsigned, graded, ungraded. And they're like a super collector of a set. Like they are the end-all be-all of that set. And there's people I know within like, there are people like that within WCW Tops autographs that are like that. Um, you name it within wrestling cards. There, there are people what I would consider super collectors of their niche. So, and again, it's just kind of a... It keeps your focus. Super collecting keeps your focus, and it allows you to kind of form your own path of what it is you want to do and being the best at. So I think that's a lot of fun. Now, <coughs> excuse me, one moment. So one of the big things that also I think super collecting does is it provides your chance at products that you may normally not get. So I would say that most people, when they're looking at wrestling cards, they're, you know, seeing the big stuff. They're seeing Hogan All-Stars Auto. They're seeing gold prisms, black one-of-ones. And I think a lot of people, you know, may maybe, maybe I'm wrong here, but I think a lot of people see that stuff as out of reach. Like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm never going to be able to afford that. Why would I even care about it? And I think what super collecting does is it allows you to get those same experiences at a fraction of the cost. What do I mean? So if you want to look back at the, let's take Transcendent, for example. The, wow, check out this card. Hold on. Hold that thought. Hold the, look at that. In motion bowling action. That's got to be a million dollar card right there, boys. Whoa, let's go. Bowling action. We got a comment before we get any further. Tony, WrestlingTradingCards.com, which uh, I do have the video of me and Tony in our backstage fight and truly why rest, uh, Worlds Collide ended due to, you know, it was very similar to the scrum between CM Punk and Jungle Boy that was just released. But, uh, you know, it's the reason Tony's talking about, it's the reason he picked Loomis because, it, yeah, it, it's affordable. You could, Tony can tell you a really good story about the Galactics. He's been trying to get the, all the Galactics of Loomis. And for some people out there that want to buy the Galactics of whoever it is out there, some people think those are unaffordable. So for Tony's example here, and this is the same thing with Cross, like you're able to get a Galactic at a fraction of the cost of what you would get, you know, a, a Hogan or a Becky Lynch or Roman Reigns or whoever it is that you collect. So before we keep going, I'm not allowed to release that. Oh, oh, sorry. I forgot about the NDAs. Sorry about that. I will do better next time on my false advertisement, getting people in here for clickbait. You told Tony to go cry you a river. Yeah, I did. I did, actually. But uh, Tony just told me I'm not supposed to speak about that with that NDA anymore. So we will not do that. We're going to let that go. Hey, maybe on another down the road, maybe we'll release. Although I'm already false advertising, right? So anyways, let's talk about the transcendent. Tony's example is exactly what I wanted to kind of bring up. Um, the Vince McMahon Superfractor and the, I think it was the Roman Reigns Superfractor Auto, both of those. So those were looked at as 
you know, big cards at the time. And uh, I don't remember what they sold for. I know Drake, you know, we had Drake on here to talk about the Drake's PC. Uh, he talked about, you know, why he made the decision to buy the Vent Superfractor and how much he paid. And I think it was like, don't quote me, I can't remember right offhand. Maybe somebody can connect. It was like between nine and 11,000, something like that. It was less than the cost of a case of Transcendent. I do remember that. So, you know, that let's just say hypothetically, that's like the top tier Transcendent card in the product, right? For nine to $11,000. Okay, yeah, uh, here we go. WrestlingTrainingCards.com coming through with all of the accurate information like they normally do. $9,000. Thank you, Tony. So I didn't really feel like spending $9,000 on any kind of card. Let's be honest. That Vince Transcendent Auto is awesome, but I didn't want to spend that much. However, in my opinion, Transcendent Autos, top tier cards. They look amazing. The Superfractor specifically. All the cards look great, but the Superfractor specifically. With that gold vinyl finish, the autographs look great. Great design. One of my favorite, in fact, my probably my favorite Topps product ever produced for wrestling is that. Remember these Skylight cards? Anybody remember these? I always thought they were cool. Robert Horry. We'll, we'll keep those. We'll put those aside and see what they do in the eBay store. So um, I was like, well, Karrion Cross has a card in that. How much is that going to cost? I did a whole video. You can check that out in the archives of this channel with the great curator who, thank, thankful to him, this Carrying Cross Superfractor Transcendent Auto was on eBay for a long time, just rotting away. Guy had it at a ridiculous price. It was like $3,000 or something like that. I'm like, Vince is nine, Carrying Cross three? That doesn't add up to me. Like, Carrying Cross, uh, in fact, at the time I bought it, I don't even think he was on the main roster. I think he'd actually got cut the, the first time before he came back the second time. So I was like, ah, that, you know, th this is one of those cards that's just going to rot away on eBay. Never going to, never going to get it. It is what it is. Next thing I know, the great curator is messaging me saying, hey, look what I found and picked up at the Dallas card show. And that kind of leads in, will lead into that about uh, one of the superpowers of super collecting. But I was able to get that card at a fraction, fraction of a, uh, not even, at not even 10% of the cost of what that vents cost. So what was so I have it in hand. It's it's down there. I don't have it in front of me. So I was able to get the top tier card of the person I collect, which is a lower name than Vince McMahon, at a fraction of the cost of what that vents was. So my, you know, you get to experience so much great product by super collecting. And even if you're buying Let's say you're collecting a mid-tier talent or a legend. Chances are that's not going to be the same price as a Hogan, a Roman Reigns, a John Cena, a Vince McMahon. So I guess when I I guess I should kind of backtrack a little bit. I'm not specifically encouraging people to just super collect lower end talent. It is a good way to get the pro, get top tier products. You know, uh, you want a Prism Gold, can't afford a John Cena, go buy you know whoever to insert mid card wrestler here. But what I'm finding is that there's a lot of people out there that are fans of all of this talent. So, um, you know, there's a Shinsuke super collector out there. I think there's an Otis super collector out there. You name it on the WWE roster, there's a super collector. You name it on the AEW roster, there's a super collector. And that's something that I know sports cards kind of have that. Um, but it seems like there are more high-end Hall of Fame collectors and team collectors than there are the people who just are going after one specific obscure talent within sports history and just going full blown on that. So um, find who you connect with within wrestling, whether it is a legend, whether it's modern, whether it's vintage, and just go after it. Like just have fun trying to get the coolest, building the coolest collection you can, whether it's autos, whether it's trying to put together rainbows, whether it's how many 1988 Road Warriors Wonderama cards can you amass? You know, there's different, there's just different ways. And I think super collecting one superpower is focus. And that is that, you know, it eliminates that shotgun approach that I talked about earlier. And basically it just keeps you And uh, Tony could attest to this. It keeps you focused on what it is that you're having fun with. And it allows you to block out the noise. Are you tired of the wrestling card Twitter beef? Use the block mute button, focus on your collection. Are you tired of seeing these huge sales within golden auctions? Or well, I guess eBay owns them now, whatever. Um, 
are you are you tired of seeing these big auctions that you think are unattainable or you're not interested in those cards? Focus on super collecting who you want and just continue to go down that rabbit hole. It has been amongst everything that happens within wrestling cards, product release delays, um, licenses changing, the, the hobby drama stuff. I don't care about any of that because it all is like a backseat compared to what I'm doing, which is focusing on not eBay store and all that aside, focusing on my collection and what it is I want, which circle back to the Dennis Rodman and Shaquille O'Neal stuff way back in the day. I didn't have social media. I didn't, I didn't care what, I mean, I guess I cared what my classmates or people I knew that I played sports with in elementary school. I cared what they collected just so I could trade them that stuff so I could get their Shaq and Rodman stuff. I didn't care what they were doing. I didn't care about their opinion on my collection. I didn't care about any of that. And that's something that super collecting has also really helped. That is a superpower is it does help you focus. And from talking with so many wrestling card collectors, focus seems to be a major problem with a lot of people. So that's something that can help. Tony's got another comment here. Um, he had this very conversation with a customer at the wrestling guy store, Phoenix. Shout out for that. Cheap pop. And now they're picking up superstars to start a super collection. Yeah, and that's exactly, Tony knows. There's a lot of other people that know. That's exactly one of the superpowers. And let's talk, uh, so, you know, product releases, that's a big thing. Can't afford a super fractor, can't afford a prism gold, can't afford a prism black, can't afford a rookie auto. Well, hey, maybe if you pick somebody that you do connect with that is a little bit cheaper, and you would be surprised at some of the names that, um, you know, they're constantly, let's take Randy Orton, like a Randy Orton, gold, super fractor, one of one, rookie, all that stuff. Randy Orton cards are going to be more affordable than some of those hobby headline cards that you see out there. And a lot of people have that discussion about, you know, undervalued, overvalued, all that stuff. I'm not here to really say anything like that. But all I can say is like, just find that talent that you connect with, whether it is the Roman Reigns, or, you know, maybe it's somebody that had like, a short stint on NXT or NXT UK and then just disappeared. It doesn't matter. Find the talent you connect with and just go for it. So more on the superpowers, talking about, um, you know, just focus. The other thing is connections. The more that you just start an Instagram page, put your stuff out there. Obviously, it would be cool if you had a YouTube channel or a podcast and you talked about whatever it is you collect. But just putting yourself out there and letting people know what you collect literally opens the floodgates. You want an example? Look at what I just talked about with the great curator. I mean, I've put it out there for like, you know, it was like a year and a half, two years at that point. Hey, I'm the cross guy. I'm carrying cross super collector. Well, great curator shows up, tags me in that post. Hey, look what I got. Cause he knew that I was going to be interested in it. I get people that will just flat out send me carrying cross cards for free. They're like, Hey, I know you're the cross guy. Add this to the super collection. I want to contribute. Thank you to everybody that does that. Some people will reach out to me, and like I said earlier, they're like, hey, I got a bunch of this stuff in breaks. Not Rick Cross isn't my guy. I know you collect him. Here's a bunch of Prism-based duplicates. Send me enough money to cover the shipping, and they're yours. I'm like, okay, cool, great. All right, one. So the connections that you make are massive. Not to mention, those connections can then go into other stuff. So. As I continue to put my stuff out there, um, both content and from just a general perspective of, hey, I'm the cross guy. Next thing I know, I've got people, hey, do you want to buy this collection? Hey, I was actually collecting Carrying Cross, but not so much anymore. Would you like to buy my Carrying Cross collection to add to your collection and you know make it even bigger and better? There's all kinds of doors that open for the least expected things. Like, um, you know, like I didn't, can, can you name uh, another sport? type of thing, or anything, non-sport, whatever. Can you name any other genre of cards other than wrestling where you can actually be such a diehard collector that the talent then responds? I don't see that a lot with sports cards, yet constantly putting out there, tagging, carrying cross in the new cards that I get. And he follows me now, and he sent me DMs, and we've gone back and forth, and uh, he thinks it's cool that I've put together such a massive collection. Again, if I did not put myself out there and talk about, hey, this is what I do. I'm going for this. This is this is my thing. That would have probably never happened. He would have just said, oh, this this Mark Wrestling fan, think, buy my card, whoop de doo But just the the focus ha and has opened the connections. The connections then open 
connections to him. So that's cool to be able to interact with the person you actually collect. And then, um, you know, I think one kind of drawback, if you want to talk about superpowers, you want to talk about kryptonite, then we're going to use the uh, superhero. Uh, we're, let, let's talk about one uh, negative aspect. And before we do that, let's go with a couple more comments. Caleb's back. Indie wrestler super collecting is especially nice because it has limited releases and lower costs. Yeah, I mean, um, sometimes I, I'm not the indie expert. Caleb is. Check out Collecting with Caleb YouTube channel and follow him on social media. But anyway, um, a lot of that limitless stuff gets expensive, but then there's some that isn't. It's like very affordable. So yeah, um, you have less stuff to get, but then you can get multiple copies. You could take like how many how many versions can I get? Can I get how many graded versions? Can I get the auto versions? Can I get the auto versions in different ink? Endless possibilities when you start super collecting stuff. But yeah, indie indie stuff is fun. I see a lot of people do that. Tony's back. Um, people get overwhelmed with consistent releases. Yep, yep. Even as a super collector, that's a little bit of a kryptonite. It's just as, as you're building the, like, I go the old school spreadsheet route with all my cross stuff, mainly because I have stuff like figures, t-shirts. I've got, you know, you can see the figure and the uh, official cross hourglass back there from a, from WWE. Um, that, that stuff, like, just as I'm building that in a spreadsheet, here comes another release. Or, you know, oh, man, um, I'm working on this. Uh, Panini NFT Don Russ Elite. Well, here comes the physical Don Russ Elite product. A lot to take in. So it can be overwhelming. But anyway, going ahead. Um, consistently putting out releases and high pricings that they sell for. More collectors are going away from box breaks, hunting down their favorites, and focusing on single cards. That's what I like. I mean, I'm not here to tell anybody what to do, how to do it. But as everything on this channel, just presenting a different way to look at things. So hopefully that will help people in doing whatever it is they want. Maybe super collecting is not for you, and that's okay too. But yeah, Tony's example there is great. Caleb's back. Um, chasing CGC pristine tens of Alley Catch and now going for... That's great. Yeah, and you know, that's one thing. Um, I Maybe I don't want to speak for you, but maybe I will. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, Jeff Jarrett laughed there. But maybe, like, I have a feeling... That trying to track down enough of her cards to then hopefully get those as pristine tens, uh, I'm guessing that's going to be pretty tough. And a lot of people out there, uh, I think if they would kind of um, channel the dopamine hit with box breaks and channel the 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 joy that they get out of opening personal boxes themselves, if they would kind of take that chase aspect, that the the gambling and the hunt, and you know you hope you pull that big card. Um, speaking of big card, I just glanced at this. Hang on. I saw this out of the corner of my eye and pulled it out. It is beat up. Caleb probably knows this is in here. Sports Illustrated for Kids, Tom Brady. This is not the rookie, but that is a nice card. So that will be put to the side to go in the eBay store. But anyway, um, I lost my train of thought with this Tom Brady card. Oh, yeah. So if they are focused so much on the big hit, why not take that same focus and put it towards whoever they collect? So for your example here with Alley Catch, it's an indie card. There's not going to be a lot of them out there. There's probably not going to be a lot of pristine 10s. So that chase that you're going to go after, the thrill of the chase, is going to be a lot of fun. Um, here he is again. Uh, there's some sets that Gem 10 is nearly impossible, much less pristine. And that's what I'm talking about. Like the, I think some people may get fed up with the chase not ending. But I think this is a good example of like the never ending chase. Like I, again, going back to that cross super fracture transcendent, I never, that, that card's going to rot on eBay forever. I'm never going to get it. And then I get it. And it was just like, man, talk about that was, that was such a fulfilling moment to have like the best card of the talent I collect available. And I finally get it. And you could say the same thing with like, I did, uh, I talked about I was able to get the Carrying Cross Base Black Prism 101. That is a card that was used on the sell sheet. So to say, you know, the, the fact that I could get the card on the sell sheet, they didn't show The Rock Gold. They didn't show Roman Reigns. Nope. Carrying Cross Prism Black, one of one, front and center on the sell sheet. I was able to get it. Like, talk about super fulfilling. But, you know, I'm going back to the kryptonite of super collecting. And that is, let's talk about Cross. You know, he got cut. 
And I, I never heard the end of it. I'm still to this day, people are still not letting me know, like uh, say what you want about what he's done on the main roster. Uh, I think it's been disappointing, but it is what it is. It does not stop me from collecting. And Tony could probably chime on this as well, that uh, once you get started down this rabbit hole of super collecting, all that other nonsense goes out the window. Like, I, I don't care. Even when he was cut the first time and I would see him show up on indie cards, there was actually some indie cards put out of him during that brief in between the WWE runs. And I was still collecting, still having fun, still watching old old matches of his on YouTube. And just all the time, people do not, they're like, oh, what do you collect Karrion Cross? He's a jobber. He's not ever going to win the world title. He's too old, this, that, the other. And I'm like, like, you're missing the point of collecting. Like, this is what I like to do. Um, this is my focus. And I'm having a blast doing it. And it's not my fault that you're out here trying to prospect, trying to box break, trying to, you know, get your PSA 10 so you can then flip them, bro. Like, nothing wrong with that. But when you start, like, throwing shade at other collectors for what it is they want to do, it's just, like, I'm not bothered by it. But I'm just like, man, this person lives a lives a sad life. So, um. Tony, I'm on the opposite end. Graded Loomis cards mean nothing to me. The thrill of the chase, his cards is all that makes it. Fun. Yeah, um, I actually did a, I think it was on Instagram, I did a reel where I had a gold prismatic entrances carrying cross card. It was a PSA 9, and I busted it out of the slab and put it in the binder. Uh, my prism black one of one cross that I mentioned in the binder. I... I don't care what anybody thinks. I get it all the time. Like, bro, what do you do? Putting a one of one prison black in a binder. You got to slab that. And then you got to put the sleeve on that. And then you got to put the slab strong slab case. Then you got to put in the Zion case. But um, whatever. Um, I just do what I want to do and continue having fun with the focus. Loomis not being on TV for the last nine months does nothing for collecting his card. Still of it. That's exactly what we're talking about here. So um, I also apologize. One of my dogs is getting upset in the background. So uh, sorry if that comes through. Anyway, so relationships. And one this is kind of ties in with connections as far as a superpower. But the more that you put stuff out there of what you collect, the more like relationships you make with the same people. I know, I know, you know, Tony, the Loomis collect. Okay, well, if I pull this super rare Loomis card, maybe I immediately know it goes to him or I can trade it to him for some cross stuff. The more stuff you put out there, the more just um, connections that you'll make, like I mentioned. But then those connections aren't always just one-off transactions. And that leads into my next thing, and that's private group chats. And I'm, I, believe it or not, contrary to popular belief, there are other carrying cross collectors out there. And if you're watching this and you're part of that group, fist bump, but we have a private carrying cross chat that we go back and forth with and, you know, that also, like, devolves into other wrestling card to topics as well. But we're constantly talking about, you know, it, it's fun that you see, like, Cross's Mania match that he just had. Like, um, you know, buried once again. <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. But uh, we were talking about that, and he's on NXT, I guess, now. And we were like, okay, well, is this is this a demotion? Um, what You know, what what's our opinions on this? And just having fun general discussion about what's going on around the talent we collect like that is something that's very underrated to me so um you know there's just all kinds of different things that i in my opinion super collecting just it, it keeps you focused it makes connections you can build relationships with it now what i think one thing that some people fall into and i don't really know how to answer this that well is what do you do when you're a super collector, but you no longer want to collect that talent. Like you become, it, it's a weird thing because like I, I've had this thought with, you know, the cross stuff, like, you know, what do, am I going to like, if I collect this forever, if I was ever to get rid of it, like, then what do I do? Because I've become the cross guy. Right. So I, I just, I don't know. Um, and I've seen people that have start super collections and then the next thing you know, they're like, ah, I'm not really into this anymore. It doesn't really have so much for the talent, but I wanted to like take all that money and that equity that I built up in this super collection, dump it into something else. Nothing wrong with that. I have never been one of those people that's to say like, um, 
you know, oh, you're not collecting this set anymore. You're not collecting this wrestler. You're not a true collector. You know, that, that stuff's not ever kind of been in my vocabulary of stuff. Old pro set Jerry Rice card. That's fun. So, um, I don't know. You know, I don't really know how to answer that aspect of it. Like, you just got to do what you got to do. If you're, you know, there's nothing wrong with your collections changing. Like, what you like now, maybe not later. But um, I just, I find that the people who really laser focus in on something continue to have more fun long term in the hobby, regardless of markets, regardless of Twitter drama. No matter what it is, if the people who are locked in on something have more fun than anybody. Tony's back. It's okay to change lanes. I'm the cross guy. Who's to say you won't go off and become the X guy? Wait a minute. Do you mean like, what was that X? Mr. X? Wasn't that a guy in WWE? Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I'm not going to be a Mr. X collector, I don't think. But um, yeah, Tony's right. That's exactly right. You can, and, and I know people who like, I guess you could even take this with prospecting. Like, they're really in on a prospect. You could call them, like, and maybe they're a fan, right? Maybe that it happens like what happens with me and Cross. Maybe the prospecting aspect doesn't work out, and they're only looking at it from a prospecting perspective. So, like, okay, I want to get rid of this and move on to the next prospect. Maybe they're actually fans. Maybe that sports person or whatever is on the team that they like. So, they can still have that connection with it. And it turns into this cross situation, whether people like whether that ends up turning out or not, they can still keep this collection going. And I, you know, I'm still going to circle back. Like I was talking about the 1 million Cubs project and that strategy. And, Oh, here you, here you go. Old school top Chrome X fractors. Who remembers those being in WWE products? So, um, Going, I lost my thought. Oh, going back to the sports thing, like I really am inspired by some people out there that I see it, collecting some really, really obscure sports stuff. It just continues, and I'm like, okay, well, that guy was like the backup third baseman, all right, or that guy was um, the touted prospect that never panned out. Yet I see these people still collecting those people that they haven't played in forever. That you know, maybe it's 20 years past their prime. They're still going out and buying the relics, buying the autographs, buying the one-on-ones. And that is really inspiring to me to, to keep me going as well. Not to keep up with them, but it's like it, it, that inspiration that people are able to take of something that is totally going against the grain of what everybody in the mainstream hobby wants to talk about. You know, getting cards graded, uh, being in box break, all the stuff that I've talked about. Being the super collector of who it is you want to do, like, that that is in a superpower within itself. So a couple more questions and we'll get out of here. Tony's back since becoming a Loomis collector. My angle collection took a backseat. And I'm kind of with you. So for um for those of you unaware, or if this is the first time you're tuning in, which thanks, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. But um <coughs> excuse me. My main features or my main PC focuses carrying cross super collection. Signed Wrestling All-Stars, which I already have the whole set. I've just kind of been going back and filling holes with autograph copies when I can or getting them done at signings, conventions, whatever. And then trying to get an autograph of every ECW talent that ever stepped foot through the door. So those are my three focuses. And, you know, you see, I, I guess this is the problem with having too many focuses. Like, it's the shotgun approach of focuses, so to speak. But, like, if you're going at, like, I finally nailed a Bob Backlund signed PSA authentic autograph. That was a couple hundred bucks. So that money right there could have been used for Cross. It could have been used for ECW autographs. You kind of have to pick and choose. And that's what Tony's talking about right here is that um, ever since he's become a Loomis collector, he was collecting Angle stuff. But now the Angle stuff sometimes takes a backseat to the Loomis stuff. And people are like, I'm sure Tony gets crap all the time. Why would you collect Loomis over Angle? Angle's a better investment. Well, whatever. We, we do what we want to do, right, Tony? Um, autograph collector, RVD. Hey, do you, do you super collect RVD? I mean, is that is that your collection? Let me know. Uh, you can also leave a comment in the archives or reach out to me on social media. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, there's probably a lot more and some different examples we could talk about with the superpower of super collecting. But I just really recommend, if you're watching this, to kind of sum it all up. Find who it is in wrestling you want to collect or non-sport or whatever it is, find the set you want to super collect because I know there's diehard set collectors out there. 
or maybe find the parallel. Maybe you only want to go after golds. Maybe you only want to go after one of ones of any talent per se. No matter the, like the rarest of the rare, no matter what it is, just block out the outside noise of whatever's going on in your in you know that's being a distraction of life because the hobby is an escape for many people from your everyday life. Block out the hobby drama. Start your Instagram account, start the Twitter account, whatever it is. Start talking about what it is you like to do. Or if you haven't even decided that, pick whatever lane you want to do. Go after it and just keep having fun. And don't worry about, you know, what's the recent comps? What's this going to grade? What's this going to sell for in 20 years? Who cares? Have fun doing what you're doing. Keep focused. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for jumping in the live chat. Again, if you have comments or questions or anything, you're watching this on the archives, leave a comment below. Also, make sure to check out the links in the show notes. We got Wrestling With Cards on Patreon. For less than three cents a day, you can have access to even more wrestling card content on that group. Um, check out the links to my eBay store, Beast Mode Collectibles, if you want to buy. like this, this will be out of everything that I've gone today. This is the stack going on eBay. The rest of the stuff's probably going to go just that I went through today. It's going in a bulk box, probably. Um, but check out the eBay store if you want to show your support that way. Links to my social platforms, and there's links to all kinds of other things down there as well. So uh, thank you guys for stopping by. Spread the word. Hit subscribe. Uh, share it with a friend. Until next time, keep collecting.